Good afternoon, everyone. ITEC welcomes all the participants for today's National Distance Learning Seminar Series. Today's topic is Management of MDR-TB and speaker is Dr. S. Kumar. Dr. Kumar is presently the RMO and Nodal Officer at Nodal DRTB Center at GHTM in Chennai. He is recognized as Master Trainer for NACO and Tamil Nadu SACS. He is a trainer of trainers for PMDT services. He is co-author for many papers on HIV and TB and his field of interest includes care and support for HIV and TB patients. We welcome you sir for today's NDLS session. I would request Dr. Kumar now to kindly take over the session. Good afternoon uh, everyone. Very happy to be back at the National Distance Learning uh, Seminar Series and I thank uh, our uh, uh, ITEC team for uh, the, uh, arranging this and also introducing me. Let me have yeah. We have the slides. Okay. Oh, so now coming to the uh, management of drug rest in TB. Previously it was called the DOPS Plus. Now it's called Programmatic Management of Drug Rest in TB. That's called that's PMDT. So if you track it uh, back to the history, even resistance to anti TB drugs was known even in 1940s. You know, when SM was the first drug to be given for tuberculosis, the fall of the susceptible organism, and then what will happen? It will mutate and there will be rise of the resistant organisms that is called fall and rise phenomenon. So that is known even from the first day of chemotherapy. So there was a dramatic rise of MDR-TB cases all over the world after the advent of HIV in 1990s. So we had a New York City MDR-TB outbreak, the same period Russia we had outbreak and recent outbreak of Xtia in South Africa. So these are the things uh, we know. So coming to the epidemiology, so we know that and latest we have the molecular techniques to know about the recent remote infections or remote infections like a new reinfection, exogenous reinfection or endogenous relapses, you know molecular biology has vastly improved. So the first eight years there are no tools to study the genetics. Now we know the genotyping can show whether it is a recent transmission or a latent infection getting reactivated. So, an important thing in drug resistant TB you should know in the epidemiology is that the recent RRTP, RRTCP, DRS studies have shown in new cases around 3% are MDR, that is called primary MDR. So, in new cases we have 3% of them are primary MDR cases. And in the retreatment cases, almost 12% are acquired MDR. So, almost in retreatment you have to concentrate more where 12% are drug resistant TB cases. Next. Coming to how we have come across how the vastly the drug resistant TB management has improved. So, a brief uh, background on the history. WHO has understood the importance of uh, the PMDT services. So, now we are from 2000, we have been concentrating on that, and the Green Light Committee told that we need a quality second line drugs to combat drug resistant TB. So, the Global Fund Against AIDS, TB, Malaria, GFATM started funding the MDR-TB from 2002 and from that on onwards we have gone leaps and bounds and improved dramatically in the management of drug resistant TB. So the PMDT previously called the DOS Plus projects multiplied all over the world globally and uh, the treatment of MDR-TB cases integrated into the regular RNTCP revised national TB control strategy in 2007. So in 2008 or 7 the first MDR-TB treatment CAT4 regimen, the standard treatment regimen was started and it does not look back. Now from now almost for the 12 years we have gone leaps and bounds and improved dramatically in the management of drug resistant TB cases. So what is that uh, drug resistant TB? So we know the presumptive TB means anyone who has got cough for more than 2 weeks or uh, chest pain, hemoptysis, evening rise of fever, night sweats. Whereas a presumptive DRTB is that TB patients who fail the treatment with first line drugs, you all know the fixed drug combination of INH, rifampicin, pyrazinamide, EMB are the first line drugs. So anyone who is started on the first line drugs, even after 2 months of follow up, they still to be sputum positive, 
they are suspected of drug resistance so any previously treated tb case it could be a relapse it could be a resistance it could be a defaulter all are presumptive drug resistant tb cases and patients with hiv co infection are suspected to be presumptive drtb so we have to start diagnose the thing early and that is important thing so any pediatric tb non responders are suspected of drug resistance and um, any tb patients who are contacts of mdr tb or rif resistance tb are also presumptive so this slide is very very important in that in this slide the so integrated drug resistant tb algorithm as well as treatment algorithm so we have the um, we have done the this side we have the presumptive tb cases or the new cases of this around 3% of primary mdr tb and all the this side of the all the old tb cases already we told they are the suspected drug resistant patients where non responders drt b contacts previously treated all everyone here whereas here also vulnerable population all these are come so what is that government has done is that this is a the cb nat or already you know the molecular diagnostics have improved the cartridge based nucleic acid amplification technique that's called the technique and the machine is called gene expert machine so the gene expert is now actually it is substituting the universal global udst drug sensitivity testing so in any case we are going to do a cb nat up front to find out the rif resistance of mdr so we are going to do a um, Ah, uh, up front we are going to do a CB NAT. We are doing the CB NAT up front for all the cases. So that is very very important thing. So we have already now scaled up everywhere. So all the patients, irrespective of new or old, are done CB NAT up front to find out the drug resistance at the earliest. Suppose the patient is found to be RIF sensitive. RIF sensitive means it's a regular uh, drug sensitive TB. So we are going to give first line treatment. But we are not. We are not. happy with that we are not stopping with that we are going to do a lpa test the other molecular test is the line probe assay that's called line probe assay we're going to talk about it later in the slides so the line probe assay is another important ornamentorium in our uh, program to find out the drug resistance early so in any regular patient rif sensitive patient we are going to do a first line lpa which will find out the inh mono resistance suppose he is inh sensitive means you are going to continue the first line drugs and finish the treatment suppose he is a inh resistant means we are going to give a different regimen all uh, oral regimen only 6 months no intensive phase no continuation phase we are going to replace inh levofloxacin with the other drugs like rifampicin pyrazinamide and emd all the four drugs are given for Six months. So this is an important thing. All of us should know that even a drug sensitive TB, after seeing that the CB nat is sensitive, first line treatment is started. But we are going to do a first line LPA to find out the INH mono resistance. Previously in the program, we were not having any good regimen for the INH mono resistance. But now we are having a isolated six months regimen of levofloxacin. EMB, pyrazinamide, and rifampicin. This is the INH resistance. Coming to the this arm, the for the patient is RIF resistant. That means RIF resistance means the patient is a MDR TB. By definition, MDR TB or INH or rifampicin resistant also isolated RIF resistance is also MDR TB. So what we are going to do for all the patients of MDR TB, we are going to start a shorter MDR regimen. That is the universal. worldwide is being followed our program also irrespective of the thing but there are some limitations i'll come in the subsequent slides so we are going to start a shorter mdr regimen and we will continue that we will do a second line lpa so the lpa technology is being made good use in that we are going to do a second line lpa where we will be finding out the resistance for quinolone quinolone and second line injectable suppose a patient either one is resistant or both are resistant they are pre hdr or hdr tb where we are going to stop the short term mdr regimen and put them on a 20 months all oral regimen with newer drug 
or without newer drug. Suppose both are sensitive, the patient will continue the shorter MDR regimen and you will be finishing the regimen. So this is the important slide in that entire program, the treatment as well as diagnostic algorithm is explained in this slide where any patient new or old coming will be doing a CBNAT. The CBNAT will tell you it is a substitute for universal drug sensitivity testing. So upfront you will know the rifampicin resistance status. Suppose the rifampicin is sensitive, we are going to be a fossil LPA and find out INH monoresistant. Suppose rifampicin resistance is a MDRTB started on shorter MDR regimen and second line LPA is given. Second line LPA shows free XDR or XDR then we will be giving a 20 months all oral regimen. So this is the important slide and I think all of our ARTMOs and others and our paramedics all should know about this important changes in the program. So what is the definition of MDRTB? But for completion sake, MDRTB is defined as tuberculosis resistant to INH and rifampicin with or without resistant to other drugs. Then HDRTB is defined as MDRTB case whose recovered isolate is resistant to INH and rifampicin, also a fluoroquinolone and a second in injectable. So that is called HDRTB. Then what are the types of resistance? Already I told you primary drug resistance. Drug resistance among new TB cases. They are not exposed to the TB drug, but they are infected with a drug resistant strain. So in our setup, any new, new patients, 3% of them are primary drug resistance. What is acquired drug resistance? Drug resistance in previously treated cases who are exposed to the TB drugs or during the course of treatment is called acquired drug resistance, which is very, very important in that in our setup, 12% of our old cases are acquired drug resistance. What is national drug resistance? Natural, sorry, natural is that this is not important in the public health program. Some of the tribes, some of their races are, uh, they are resistant to a particular drug. Say for example, one uh, wild uh, parison is resistant to one of the uh, tribes uh, in a forest. So this is not important in the public health program. Just to keep it in mind that there will be some natural drug resistance where the patients or the relatives are not exposed to the drug, but by nature, by race, they are resistant to that drug. Next. So how the drug resistance develops? The, the mycobacterium tuberculosis, you know, way back it was found out in 1872 by Robert Koch that uh, TB is caused by mycobacterium tuberculosis. Even after so many years, after 125 years, we are not able to um, control or eradicate, eradicate the tuberculosis because of its uh, it's it's so it's so uh, survival instinct. So it wants to survive. So that's why it will create a lipid rich cell wall which will prevent the drug from penetrating or it will do produce some enzymes that will degrade the drug and commonly what will happen a genetic mutation occurs a random genetic mutation that will have a problem. So what what is our duty is that we should see to that we prevent the drug resistance. So MDRTB is a man-made phenomenon. So remember the three P's. Poor treatment is due to the physician. Suppose the physician is giving a sub-therapeutic dose or the physician is giving a very high dose which is toxic or side effects are there, patient will stop the treatment. So poor treatment means it is physician. As other physicians, we are responsible for treating the primary, that is the first line treatment should be very correct so that they don't, we don't, we don't encourage or we prevent the MDR-TB. So the poor drugs means the program. So poor drug means other P. Poor drugs equal to program. The program now it is very robust. We have all the drugs which are continuously uh, it is available. So we open a box for a patient so there is no longer uh, discontinuity or non-availability of drugs. So we have a good quality drug with good supply chain. So all the drugs are available for all the patients. So poor drugs which is program based is now almost almost it is good. What is the adherence? The poor adherence is patient. The third P. Poor adherence is patient. We always blame the patient. We tell that patient is not taken the problem. He has defaulted. But it is our duty. We should be accountable. It is our duty to see to that the patient takes the drugs properly. We should counsel the patient address the adverse drug reaction 
so that the patient takes the treatment so the first line treatment 6 months of fdc if they properly take it we can prevent the mdr tb so three remember the three p's poor treatment is physician poor drug is program poor adherence is patient so as the first thing physician we should take up the accountability we should not blame the patient we see to that they take the first line drugs finish the treatment so that mdr tb is prevented so the genetic mutation is to drug effect so the inadequate treatment is the main culprit we should not give sub therapeutic dose that's why now we are we are weight bands high weight bands now more accurate dosing fixed drug combination so that patient selectively not stop any drug all the four drugs are in the single pill so one day uh, the, the treatment is made easy and the calculation is all five weight bands everything is more accurate so we can have a more accurate dosing which will prevent adverse drug reaction or a sub therapeutic dose so what are the now we have finished what is the program related thing now what are the diagnostic test we have so the direct test is the gold standard microscopy way back in so many years the microscopy is the first thing now we have the culture the culture is solid as well as liquid culture so solid culture liquid culture solid is the lg medium liquid culture is the midget microbacterium growth indicator tube then we have the molecular nucleic acid techniques like the gene expert lpa then we can have the antigen reduction phage based assays liquid chromatography all these are more advancing tests so what are the indirect tests where the bug is indirectly uh, uh, followed or what is that we have the man to test tuberculosis skin test and the next thing is the igra interferon gamma assay the serological test we have put it in red serological tests have been banned by who antibodies against uh, tuberculosis like igm igg we should not do because they are also non specific so kindly avoid doing the serological test for tb so the other things are valid all the diagnostics have been endorsed by who so what is the diagnostic tools we have the sputum smear we have the z nielsen the original whenever we are all undergraduates the z nielsen we have to do we have personally done that so it is for only limited population whereas the fluorescence training is for more population where more number of cases can be done easily so in our hospital we are doing around 150 200 smear examination per day so we find we follow the fluorescence training we have the binocular microscope where the golden yellow rods the olivenin stain fluorescence training will help detect more cases more specific and sensitive so the fluorescence microscope for larger number of patients then the x ray radiology is there but it is not that specific so all the imagings may be mimicking tb also we should be careful some of the malignancies can mimic tb so we have to be careful so radiology is also a very important tool in that we have now got the clinical tb there is entity called clinical tb so whenever a patient spear is negative gene expert is negative but x ray is sensitive of tuberculosis we can start anti tb treatment and follow up the patient that is called clinical no longer empirical it's clinical tuberculosis then we have the growth based phenotypic testing like identifying the bug itself phenotypic testing that is the uh, lj culture and the liquid culture midget back tech so first line second line other drugs we can do with that the liquid culture and drug sensitivity then the rapid molecular test are called the genotype test so you are going to identify the genetic material of the organism so we have the cb nat already we told you about the cb nat cartridge based nucleic acid amplification and second is the line pro assay so one by one now we will see what are the test and how are they are very useful so what is the culture culture is the most uh, important sensitive you know we have been reading about the lj liquid lj medium lavenstein jensen medium so what is the disadvantage it takes minimum 45 days to grow so another 45 days for drug sensitivity so the turn on time is 90 days so the 90 days is very long duration where for clinicians it will not be helpful so Liquid, uh, then comes the so now this slide shows you um, here you can see that the conventional solid culture is here the growth is here the green malachite green so lj medium egg based it takes more time 45 days whereas the back tech is there trays are there where the 
mycobacterium growth indicator tube tubes will be placed inside it will be pushed and within two weeks you can know the result so faster direction of growth higher sensitivity so within two weeks you can find out the growth so liquid media only two weeks to grow the organism another two three weeks to know the drug sensitivity so only in 40 42 days you can know the so two weeks you can diagnose and another drug sensitivity another two three weeks so the turnaround time is almost half of the solid culture so that is very very important so these are the two things so what is that the back tech we have this non radiometric is better so radiometric we are avoiding so the midget midget is not being used everywhere the growth tube will be there the growth of the mycobacterium will be demonstrated by the fluorescence this fluorescence will be at the lower end it will be read by the computer so within a short time hundreds of samples can be processed and read liquid culture within two weeks so that is a important um, important uh, diagnostic tool which is now we have got in our program the midget or the liquid culture so that is important then so what are the molecular approaches for tb diagnosis who has endorsed all these two tests so what is that so it is based on the targeting and multiplication of different areas of mycobacterial dna so it's a nearly perfect sensitivity in smear positive and 76% smear negative patients so what is happening false positives rarely can occur due to contamination of sample with environmental mycobacteria or some unspecific attachment so false positive are rare very rare seldom can occur but false negatives are more false negatives are in that it commonly occurs because a low number of mycobacteria suppose the sample has got less than 100 something it cannot be detected by the even the molecular test very low number so that is one important thing okay then comes the uh, who recommendations so who in 2008 recommended first the lpa line pro assay various companies names are here just no need to bother about that to find out the rifampicin resistance then came the gene expert that was endorsed in 2010 see gene expert is easily it can be done whereas lpa needs more infrastructure more technical expertise and uh, now coming to 2016 who has issued a new policy for lpa in the direction of resistance second line tb that's a second line lpa then in 2017 we got the ultra gene expert ultra so these are the various things which have been who has recommended so the molecular test have revolutionized the diagnosis of mdr tb so what is gene expert so it is a molecular based uh, there will be uh, so many probes are there first the mtb protein will be detected by the first set of probes the second probes will detect the gene uh, rpob gene which is responsible for rif resistance so it is very very sensitive in gastric aspirate used in the who for the pediatric population so what will happen with the reagent 2m this sputum is uh, put in sputum or acetic fluid or plural fluid or a peritoneal fluid or csf we put here and they are mixed 2 ml of that is taken into the cartridge and it is being pushed into the chamber that's all no more hands so technically only a lab technician is enough to prepare it and push it into the chamber so what will happen then they will sample will be ultrasonic uh, uh, lysis will happen it will be clean then dna uh, the dry pcr reagents are added and both are mixed and it is read and the result will come out as a print out within 2 hours so what will come first step is mtb detector or not detected so if mtb detected mean second step will come refresence detected or not detected so with only 2 hours you can find out the mdr tb status of the patient so that's why in a country now there are more than 1000 cb nat machines are being employed all over india for the pndt program so we have to make use of this cb nat machine and immediately we can diagnose all the patients mdr tb status within 2 hours so we have to make use of this that is the gene expert so what are the advantages of gene expert sample can also be processed like lymph node it can be crushed and put in put into the chamber two hours period it's coming sensitivity and specificity more than the lpa in the smear negative sputum positive patients and hiv next line 
So now comes the Ultra. What is Gene Expert Ultra? It is a new machine which has been more uh, accurate and it's been pro produced now. So it's an Ultra machine. There's an Ultra cartridge, larger chamber for DNA amplification. So what is that? Even 116 bazillion in smear 1 ml will be deducted, whereas Gene Expert needs 131 per ml. So as slow as 16 bazillion can be seen in the Gene Expert Ultra, which is also available in some selected places. So what is TrueNAT? TrueNAT is the indigenous India made machine which is replacing Gene Expert. Here only 0.5 ml of sputum is required. It is battery operated and it is not automated. So you can do it in the field itself. At the doorsteps in the villages, hilly areas, you can diagnose MDR TB or a, 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 a ordinary TB and one test at a time. So the paramedics can carry it in their bag, take it to the doorstep and do TrueNAT. So TrueNAT is an indigenous Indianized version of Gene Expert. So it is cheap also. So now coming to the line probe assay. So we have now two tests I already told you. Molecular or genotypic test. One is the Gene Expert which we have discussed. Now we have the line probe assay. What is the LPA? So DNA only amplified and hybridized onto nitrocellular strip for detection of MTB mutation. So it is like a western block. The bands will come. INH resistant bands, one band. Reef resistance means one band. Then even it is being extrapolated to second line LPA. I, injectable resistance one band. Uh, quinolone resistance one band. So within four hours you can find out the MDR status as well as HDR status of the individual. What is that in line probe assay? The problem is that line probe assay it is needs more space and you need a negative chamber infrastructure then you need technical expertise. The trained people only can various steps are involved. We have to do that. So second line LPA the WHO recommendations is that rapid test will allow you need to either shorter area. So the rapid test of uh, gene expert will tell you whether the TB patient is MDR. So shorter MDR you can do it. So what is that second line LPA? If you do a second line LPA, these patients we can find out the pre XDR XDR. So these XDR or pre XDR they are not eligible for short MDR because the short MDR regimen their Q rate will come down. Pure MDR the Q rate is 80 to 90 percent whereas in a uh, pre XDR XDR it is only 50 percent. So it will jeopardize the treatment outcome. That's why the second LP is being used judi judiciously to find out they are eligible for any shorter or all oral 20 months. These patients therefore to be put on conventional MDR regimen. Now the conventional regimen is 20 months all oral, no canamycin, no capiamycin. The, because the injectables are being slowly phased out. So patient directed with XTRTB by second LPA should not be individual, individual should not be enrolled on shorter regimen. Okay. So what is that second line LPA? The same thing as first line LPA. Probes or extra probes are there for gyro B gene that is the uh, for the quinolone and gyno A and RRS for the injectables. So these are the second line LPA. So what is new in the diagnosis of TB? So pyro sequencing. So in our uh, TR TB research center otherwise called NIRT in Chepet, they are trying a pyro sequencing where a luciferase based on luciferase to monitor the DNA production. So the principle is like uh, it is uh, something bit complicated. So with this pyro sequencing is a rapid and high throw, th throughout method for reduction of resistance to the common drugs. So at the earliest we can know what drugs to use. So pyro sequencing can be used as a practical molecular diagnostic tool for screening and predicting the resistance of retreatment pulmonary tuberculosis. So now coming to the treatment path. Now we have finished the epidemiology path where I told you 3% of fresh cases are MDR, 12% of uh, old cases are MDR. So we, we thought we, 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 we saw that. Next coming to the newer test, the molecular test or genotypic test like the gene expert and LPA. We, we, we saw how they are very useful and early diagnosis we saw that. Now we coming to the treatment part. So the WHO has revised the guidelines. The medicines are being 
evaluated by so many people experts the meta analysis of various studies have shown the drugs are being monitored and the ranking is given so previously we had group a group b group c and group d now the revised grouping of medicines is that there are only three groups the first two groups are the top drugs the group a we have levofloxacin or moxi the quinolone then the bedatinib the newer drug and the linozolid so this, these these three are the top drugs for mdrtb whenever you are going to design a regimen we should include all the three and bedatinib if is eligible should be included group b is the other two starting with c clofosamine or cyclosporine these two are the the other two drugs which are also very efficacious in mdrtb so these five drugs are very very important the group c the miscellaneous group where we have the etambutol pelamanid uh, pyrazinamide pyrazinamide then imipenem or meropenem so imipenem or meropenem need celastin or comox clave to boost it so imipenem or meropenem cannot be given alone it needs celastin or we should have a comoxiclet then amikacin etionamide or protinamide and pa so these are all now come down because of their adverse effects side effects these two drugs are come down the ladder so we have the top five of these five levo or moxi bedatinib linozolid clofosamine cyclo so we have to design a regimen using this so what are the newer tb drugs there are only two which are now available bedatinib and dilamanib there is a third drug which came recently it's been focused pritomanib which is very very efficacious but it may take some time to come to our place so the bedatinib is a new drug with anti tb effect approved for treatment of multi drug resistant by us fda so it has a strong bactericidal and sterilizing activity long half life of 5 and 1/2 months it shows significant benefits improving the time to culture from mdr tb so what had happened we had fast tracked the bedatinib and after conditional access program after 2 years now we have included it into the program so bedatinib is being used in the adult pulmonary tb we are not so not it's not extra pulmonary but lymph nodal effusion case also we are treating so it is part of the background optimized background regimen so bedatinib plus another four second drugs in addition is that if it is a current drug so this is a uh, whenever there is pre hdr xdr we have to start them on the bedatinib other drug is the dilamanib so dilamanib also is a useful drug so what is the difference between bedatinib and dilamanib bedatinib for age above 18 dilamanib for below 18 up to 6 years so introduction of dilamanib also being done now but uh, bedatinib is there available for all over whereas dilamanib being now in, introduced in a phased manner in every place next so what are the various regimens now available in the pmdt standard drt what are the thing uh, all oral h mono poly regimen already told you uh, six months of drug for inh mono or some other resistance poly drugs then we have the shorter mdr regimen and then we have the all oral regimen with or without new drug 20 months so for mdr practically we have two regimens shorter mdr regimen with the six months of injection only 9 to 11 months only treatment other than that all oral longer regimen with bedatinib or without bedatinib 20 months so patient is less than 17 we have to give dilamanib more than 18 bedatinib and dilamanib so this is in a nutshell so what are the regimen available inh mono i told you 6 months of 6 months of 6 uh, months of levo rifampicin emd parazinib no intensive phase no continuation phase all for 6 months h mono then mdr tb we have shorter mdr regimen 4 to 6 months of intensive phase of moxifloxacin canamycin or amikacin etionamide clofosamine pyrazinamide iodosinh and emd plus 5 months of continuation phase we are giving moxi clofa pyrazinamide and emd we are stopping the injection and iodosinh and etionamide so three drugs are stopped this is the shorter mdr regimen this has to be followed for all the patients provided if they are pre hdr xdr then we have to go for the all oral 20 months 18 to 20 months bedatinib 6 months linozolid levofloxacin linozolid 
glucosamine and cyclosporine here this rider is linozoid first six months 600 followed by 300 because of the toxicity so we have to be very careful so it is a 20 months regimen first six months bedaclin remaining months all the drugs and linozoid half the dose after six months so this is the all oral this is being being followed all over so shorter mdr all oral long regimen okay so now we have know what are the regimens available so what is that short term mdr why we are following everywhere the short term mdr is recommended for patients who new mdr or rsv die reliably confirmed by cbnat lpa or even lj medium phenotypic text lj medium or liquid and they are pure mdr very important if they are resistant to quinolone or second line injectable they are not eligible for short term mdr so children also can be started hiv patients also can be started so we have to offer the shorter mdr for all the patients why because it is only 9 to 11 months i'll tell you in the next slide why it is so so the treatment is 9 to 11 months indicated for pulmonary and extra pulmonary case like effusion lymph node they are what who are all not to be given any hdr or pre hdr pregnancy any disseminated tb like bone tb brain tb if they are exposed to mdr drugs for more than one month but they are not resistant sensitive to the this um, injectable or on the and dst shows some uh, thing so dst is not that important so keep in mind that if they are hdr or pre hdr or a pregnant any adverse drug, drug reaction to the seven drugs of short term mdr suppose you cannot use the short term mdr you need one drug also we have to go for the all oral 20 months regimen so justification overall 13 countries they have tried this the number is 1116 specific so what had happened i treatment success relapses were very low less expensive uh, treatment success was pre exer and exer was less that i already have told you so all, all what is the all oral longer regimen patient in whom short term mdr tb cannot be considered already told you for a reason maybe due to resistance or tolerability pre hdr xdr special situation we have to go for a all oral 20 months regimen so in the what is that in the ghtm we have the we want to share our data so i told you 2008 we started the pmdt program dots plus program those days we didn't have the gene expert or lpa so what was that we can diagnose only 54 patients in 2009 we started them on the cat4 or cat5 what happened once you know that molecular test have come like gene expert and lpa it doubled in 2007 124 so initially we are seeing only the tip of the iceberg now we are seeing more cases in the community 2011 181 2012 more cases 435 it reached the peak in 610 2013 now why it is dropping down because now we have decentralized we have nodal drtb centers for every 1 crore population so every 10 lakhs like 1 crore we have a nodal drtb center so in tamil nadu we have seven nodal drtb centers to cater to the mdrtb so once it is decentralized and we have diagnosed all the patients in the community so now it is slowly stabilizing 326 373 370 340 so this is the scenario xd are also same thing we diagnosed in 2011 11 only 9 so it reached 19 17 so it was increasing 37 then now it is decreasing reaching a plateau so this is the epidemiology or data of the tambara so what is the test we have done so we have done so many lpa so many gene expert all are increasing see almost now now we have, now we have done the universal dst 11000 gene expert so everything is now being increasing so we are making use of the gene expert and uh, our our statistics on bidaclin so bidaclin we have started around 300 cases see almost half of them have converted to negative that means very good bidaclin is very efficient efficacious so some of them stopped the treatment some of them have been transferred to other states the died 47 why they are the death is 47 is because lot of them are started late because during the earlier days we didn't have the gene expert or lpa 
So once the destruction occurs of the lung tissue, core pulmonary, pulmonary hypertension, so they all died of the complications of TB. So now we are starting them early because of gene expert and LPA. We are starting treatment early. So this loss of death is being now prevented more. So we have to be very careful. Subject the patient for gene expert and LP at the earliest so that we can diagnose and bring down the mortality of the MDRTB. So cases last to follow up 25. So we have to have concentrated more on them. So when they are last to follow up, we have to track the patients, counsel them and bring them back to the program. Treated, completed because it was all 22 years regimen. Completed is around 7. Now it has increased. The number has increased. So the bedaclin is a very promising drug. And uh, how to prevent the drug resistance? So we have been talking about the program management of drug resistant TB. But the thing is that ideally we should prevent it. So we have to have a robust first line drug treatment. So drug resistance can be prevented by the use of appropriate regimens and ensuring these regimens are taken correctly. So it is our duty on the sectors to see to that the primary ordinary TB, the drug sensitive TB, patients are taking the drugs properly and finishing the treatment so that MDR TB is prevented. So appropriate regimen should be made by national authority. So what about the guidelines? So guidelines says four drugs you start. But what happening? Our private practitioners are starting three drugs. They are starting two drugs. So these will all lead to mutation and drug resistance. So, scientific evidence, control trials are there, knowledge of drugs is part of the community. So, we should start the guideline, follow the treatment guideline. So, what is the optimal regimen maximizes chance of cure while minimizing the complexity, toxicity and risk of development of additional drugs. So, if you are going to give a high dose, toxic dose, side effects will be more, patient will stop the drug. If you give a subtherapeutic dose, it will do it to drug resistance. So, right dose, right time, right duration. So, now we have the FTC. So, patient will not split the drugs and take. So, we are preventing that with FDC, fixed the drug combination. But even in that, suppose a patient, four tablets he has to take. Suppose he takes two in the morning, one in the afternoon, one in the night. That also is not good. So, he has to take all the things together. So, that is splitting the first line drugs is not uh, advisable. So, see the MDRTB, the institutional outbreaks can happen. Overwhelmed pelvic health programs and complex clinical management issues may contribute to the convergence of MDRTB and HIV infection epidemics. That's why we have the R infection control, 3I project, intensive case finding, INH prophylaxis, and R infection control, fast tracking of 4S symptoms. So, the MDRTB, we should be very careful in an HIV infection. So, there can be a nosocomial outbreak of the disease. So, early diagnosis and subjecting for proper second line drugs will be very, very important. To first all disastrous consequences, infection control, rapid case detection, uh, and expanded program caps are needed urgently. So, in our program, we have been doing nicely. In that, the treatment plan of PMDD slowly scaled up. Initially, we had uh, category 4 and category 5. Then we found out that lot of machines of gene experts have been pumped in and put in various places. Then the LPA, intermediate reference lapses have come up. Capacity building is very, very important in a public health program. That's why we have this national distance learning session today. So the capacity building is very, very important that to control the any, 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 any infectious disease. All the, right from the top person down to the grassroots worker should know about the various things. So the, then we had the CAT4, CAT5, then we had the shorter MDR regimen being implemented, then we fast track that Bidaphanin and Dilamanid are now available for our patients. So that is also important. Then now we have the 20 months all oral regimen where there is no injection. So when the injection is not there, the autotoxicity, nephrotoxicity is prevented, good adherence will be there and patients will complete the treatment and get cured. So these are the various things. Our guidelines have been rapidly changed according to the scenario, according to the scientific inputs. Rapidly they have revised the guidelines and now we have the MDRTB 2019 draft, final draft is ready and it's be, it will be coming out 
that the material i have taken is from that only so it is the november so it is the uh, all all over 20 months engineering and short term mdr engineering so even with that fast uh, track phase we are going what are the challenges ahead the management of close contacts of india tv is under debate for uh, for example in a drug sensitive tv close contacts we give inh prophylaxis 6 months same thing for hiv patients also we are giving inh prophylaxis now we are going to do a to a 3 hp trial 12 weeks every week we give uh, inh and rifap pentin so every week 12 weeks that's called 3 hp trial it's going to be followed all over the india so that the latent tb breaking down to become tb is being prevented with this uh, 3 hp trial so that is there in the drug sensitive tb whereas in mdr tb how the close contacts can be uh, managed what chemo prophylaxis can we give them so these are all gray area ideal thing we should see to that they are screened for mdr tb whenever they get a sputum pass immediately we have to be a gene expert lpa and the fast track the diagnosis for close contacts of mdr tb and other thing challenge is that the uh, diabetes so the diabetes outbreak of the diabetes epidemic so every other place we have diabetes so what are the problem is sir the diabetes is a problem we have to combat that ideally insulin other thing should be available and uh, ideal diabetes control should be made available the hba1c should be available in all the places control of the diabetes so extra pulmonary drug is in tb it's very difficult to diagnose the material very difficult to get so you get a csr you do a gene expert so it's very difficult to do lpr liquid culture follow so gene dotypic test has to be standardized so extra pulmonary only clinical follow up is there diet is supplement a nutrition assistance to be addressed that's why we have the direct beneficiary transfer so money is being directly put to patients account for a, a dietary supplement and nutrition assistance that is being taken care by the program so we have the nikshay id where all the uh, drug, uh, uh, all the D- uh, tb cases are notified they are all being uh, program it's being uh, registered then direct beneficiary transfers they all the cells are entered so it is very good in that we are tracking the cases and the good data will be coming so that operation research will be better a newer uh, newer policies will come up soon so i think the that is next i think will be the final slide my slide i think the final present slide is the take home message is that implementation of good quality dogs program is the first priority for tb control in india so you see that the first line drugs are taken properly so that drug resistance is prevented prevention of mdr is more imperative than treatment so we have today we have assembled for finding out the treatment part but ideally it should be seen seen to that the situation is not occurring first line drugs are more efficient less, less uh, side effects and very cheap so mdr tb cost more than 20 times see the bidatinib is very costly bidatinib is very costly so we have to be very careful so that the financial part also we can save more by implementing a good first line dogs are for fdc program now it's called not dogs for fdc daily treatment not directly absorbed it's daily treatment next so we need to end tb leave no one behind so with the who sto by 2035 we have to bring it to so many levels so that it is almost eradicated but in our country we are fast tracking we want to see to that by 2025 we are achieving the goal what the millennium goal what the who is endorsed so that is the optimism we want to do it early so the pessimist will see difficulty in every opportunity i have seen i am in the program for many years you see that the mdr tb patients did not have any proper drugs it was on the program then the follow up of patients only lg medium now what has happened slowly one by one liquid culture has come gene expert lpa now there are standard good treatment available all the patients after one week if they stay they go back they are taking the treatment at the home so so much has happened so we should be always optimistic and see to that in opportunity every difficulty should the opportunity come out of it so that's my thing i i i thank all all the participants for their patient listening and any queries or doubts you have please you can type it out so that we can discuss it with everyone so i, I once again thank i tech uh, and also the organizers of ndls for giving me this uh, excellent opportunity to be here after a long time thank you so much
Thank you, sir, for this informative session. Thanks to all the participants for patient listening. If you have any query, you can type in in the chat box. All participants are requested to kindly enter the e-poll, which will be displayed on the screen shortly. Thank you very much.